Welcome back to Scotty's Clock World. I upload new clock repair videos on Sunday and Wednesday mornings of every week. This is a new Haven clock that I picked up a couple of years before COVID and it's been sitting in my workshop ever since. And I only rediscovered it a couple of weeks ago when I was having a bit of a clean out and getting rid of stuff that I've accumulated over a long period of time that I will never in actual fact get round to using. It's an interesting clock, and we'll be talking about that further in a moment. But first, we'll open the glass and have a look and see what's inside. To do that, we need a number four clock key. To open it on the side over here, that releases the front door. First up, we'll have a look at the the locking mechanism, which you can see there. When I turn the key, that bright piece comes out to lock that piece there. I'll turn it sideways now. So that would have cost more to produce than the usual piece of steel that is used to close the front door. I'll remove some parts from it that are loose. That's the original face. That's a patent number written on it up there. The rest is a banded tin back, and you can see it's been soldered on there in five places. This piece of timber goes there, and then the clock base sits on it like so. However, we don't need those for the moment, so we'll remove them. A bit about the case first. Glass is obviously pretty dirty, it's in serious clean up, as you can see from that clean bit there. Quite dusty, but that's my problem. It, it's not a problem with the clock, because it's been sitting in a back shelf. The case isn't in too bad a condition, actually. A little bit of the lacquer is crazed on it there and up the top. So that'll end up down in the workshop and I'll remove all that and I'll put a coat of coat of my tongue oil beeswax over that and then I'll probably polish it on on the lathe I would think and bring it up. There's a tiny little bit of the original label just there, the New Haven. Got some markings on here that's when someone had a look at cleaning it up, I imagine. All right, that's the case. Not too bad a condition. Probably rosewood or cherry I would think but it's a bit hard to tell in that condition all right now the interesting thing about this is this thing here a music box movement New Haven didn't ever make music box systems in their clock You can see down the bottom here, I don't know whether you can actually, yes you can, down, there we go, that's better, it says manufactured by New Haven, Connecticut, USA. Now back to the music box here, made by Genko in Hong Kong, so the quality is, I suppose at the very least, suspicious, but anyway, be that as it may, it's certainly not Swiss made. But it does play a reasonable little melody. I'll, I'll roll it on a bit. 
one of my members has suggested that the tune is Brahms Lullaby. I would have no idea about that at all, so I'll go along with what Whitney's saying. But it sure works how it connects up to the movement I've got no idea other than this piece down here which is a homemade thing obviously that must be pulled up and that little lever there get a bit closer that little lever there comes up and stops the fly from turning which will then stop the music box the giveaway that this was a normal New Haven clock. If you look here, you can see a hole and you can see a, an impressed circle running around there. That's where the gong used to sit. The standard coiled gong. These holes here are where the alarm mechanism was screwed down, I think, because there's no alarm mechanism there. But this came with the clock. And that's what you use to set the alarm. That finial. Sits on the top of the clock there. To finish it off. All seriously dusty but that's from being in my workshop and there's a few other parts over here assortment of screws the owl hand minute hand and the suspension spring No pendulum bob came with the clock. We've got heaps of those in stock, so it'll be easier to put one of those on later on. So we're going to have a look at the movement now, but I'm pretty interested to find out if in actual fact the guy got the music box to work, because I can't see any way that that's going to work. The movement I'm going to have a look at now got a piece of wire on it down here and I would think that that is what ties into that funny little hook down the bottom and turns the mechanism on and off there's some rather strange looking things on this movement and we're about to have a look at that now all right let's have a look at the movement this is the movement that came out of the clock that's a wire I was talking about that I think the guy tried to activate the music box with. But we'll have a look at that later. We'll just have a general run over the, the movement at the moment, see what it looks like. The escape wheel turning. New Haven brand down there. Right, we'll turn it over and have a look and see what we can see see if we're going to have any bushing to do on this movement or not they look all right turn it over check the back see what we've got oh and see it's pretty loose it's going to have to be rebushed and you'll notice here Maybe the guy didn't have the right size bushes. You'll notice on a couple of these, starting with that one there and that one there also, the bushes are not the correct size. The plate's been hit with a hollow punch to move them over a bit to hold them into place. 
in this picture of the back plate. The circle holes A and B in the plate had bushings installed, however they're the incorrect size. And whoever did this bodgy repair has used a hollow punch to move material on the back plate around to hold the bushings in place as they were too small for the hole in the back plate. The circle hole C has no bushing in the hole on the back plate but a hollow punch has been used to shrink the diameter of the hole so it will fit the pivot better. All told, that's not a particularly classy repair job. They sort of look alright, but they have been definitely tampered with, so those two will have to be replaced for sure. Right, let's see what else we've got. It's a huge warning wheel, look at the size of that. There's the pin on it. Now, there's a piece of wire here that's tying up the J-hook. That piece there. So that it can't operate. So that's rather intriguing. We'll take that into account and we'll remember that when we put the movement back together again. Oh, and his super duper piece of wire's fallen off. It's a spring there that goes down inside there. You'll notice there's no count lever on it. He's obviously removed that. So this will be interesting. Alright, so the count wheel still leave it no count lever. And there's no lift lever as such. So this will be a rather intriguing episode trying to work out what all this is about. That's a maintenance cam there. A different configuration in that it's got a a large brass, large piece of brass rod that's holding the cam, this piece here, in relation to the wheel. Never seen that before. So this is going to be a rather interesting exercise to work out how he got this to work. That is assuming that he did, and I'm, and I'm not sure that he ever did. I think he might have given it a a bit of a go and it didn't work out because somehow you've got to get the power from the movement down to the music box and all I can see so far is this piece of wire to turn it off so I don't know how he did that. All right let's let down the main springs we'll take the movement apart and have a look and see what else we may or may not find inside there that is non-standard, seriously non-standard. Okay, we'll let the main springs down. The strike side's wound up, which isn't a problem. So, what we need to do is find a, a spring that's gonna fit it. It's a bit big, but I, all my other ones are out on clocks at the moment. So we may well have to use a couple of those. The other ones in there are too small. Next thing we need is a letdown tool. See what size these the flats on the winding arbor are. And we want probably the other one was a number four, seven and eight. It may well be that we're going to need, see how five goes. Yep, five will do it. We haven't got a number four. That's our let down tool. We'll wind the time side up a tiny little bit to make sure that the, yep, that works okay. Right, main spring clamp. We'll put that over the top of the spring here. 
that we're going to let down. Let it sit there. We'll only let the spring down partially because we want that clip to be in the centre of the spring, not down at the bottom. Alright, find where the click is. Screwdriver into the click, hold it back, and let the let down tool run round slowly in your hand, just a little bit, because you want to get the mainspring clamp in the correct position. Okay, back again. Screwdriver into the click, pull it out a little bit, let the tool run round in your hand, you can hear the spring unwinding slowly, that'll do it, let's check, no, not there yet, okay, once again, got to be getting tighter now, surely the spring is going to be fully wound down in a moment, right, we'll try that, yep, that's getting better, that out of the road and have a look and you can see that the mainspring clamp is now clamping the spring but it's still movable we can adjust it up and down which is what we want so we'll put that in the center of the spring you can see it there let down tool on again find our click screwdriver behind it pull it out from the ratchet and slowly let the let down tool spin in your hand. Remove the tool, screwdriver, turn it over, have a look. And the spring is seriously contained in that clamp. Right, now we'll do the other side. First up, got to wind the spring up initially simply because it's too wide to fit a clip on right let's try that nope that isn't gonna fit okay need a bit more number five very handy these little five way keys you can get pretty good movement on them now how are we going? That's looking a lot better. Slide that in underneath. There we go. Now, flip it over. Same as before. We don't want to let it all the way down because we want the clamp to be in the center of the, the spring. Let down tool on. Find where the click is. Push it out from the ratchet. Put a little bit of positive pressure on the on the spring so that you can release the click from the ratchet. Let the let down tool run round in your hand for a while. Keeping an eye on the size of the spring as it expands. Right, put the click back into place. Got him. Turn it over. Check and see how the, the clamp's going. Needs to be down on the bottom there. All right. Where's our clamp got to? That clamp has to go right down to the bottom. And there's a couple of, you can see there's a steel rod there, one there also, one there, so that if the spring breaks and let go, then it's not gonna trash the train above it. So what I've got to do is rewind that a little bit 
that's obviously gone out too far. Where's our number five? Wind that a bit more. Because we've got to be able to get our mainspring clamp down in behind that bar that I just showed you, that post. Get that out of the road. There we go, that's got him. It's in position now. There it is there. And it's holding a little bit, which is good. We'll put the clip in the middle of the... as close as we can get to the middle of the mainspring. Let down tool back on. Find the click again. Little bit of positive pressure on the winder. Push the click out of the ratchet. Let it turn down a little bit, not much. Make sure the ratchet is caught again. Check the positioning of the mainspring clamp. Little bit of positive pressure. Click out of the road. And this time, We'll let it down all the way because the clamp is in the right position. All right, there we go. Turn it over, have a look and see. And we've contained both the springs. All right. It's now safe. Start taking the movement apart. Bearing in mind there still may be a little bit of tension going up the train in some of these wheels. That's a little bit tight there. That one's not too bad. So as we take it apart, we've got to be careful of that. We don't want it to go bang and start throwing wheels all over the place. All right, let's take the movement apart. Okay, we're going to start taking the movement apart now. First, we'll remove the crutch and pallets by taking that lever off out of the road. There are the pallets, there and there, leading and trailing, and that's the crutch. It's not a verge, as many people call that part of the clock. Verges haven't been used on clocks since the early 1800s and to be a verge there has to be a contrate wheel on it and a contrate wheel on the clock is a wheel that doesn't have the teeth pointing out that way it's in that shape like so and turns round when verges were being used in 15, 16, 17 centuries most of the clocks only had one hand on them because they were so incredibly inaccurate they realized it wasn't feasible to have a minute hand on a clock because they couldn't accurately assess what the minutes were so that's why they only had one hand that showed the time all right they've been taken off now i'll put that lever back on top so it doesn't get bent now i think what we'll have to do now will be remove this strange piece of wire that's tying the j-hook down we'll investigate that later on but we're going to have to remove that if we're going to take the movement apart so i'll put a set of cutters on it cut it and then remove it that end down there and i think in actual fact i've dropped it into the movement all right, not a problem, it's off anyway. While we're here, well, there it is. It's come off, put it aside for the bin. Now, while we're here, I'll take this spring wire off, undo that. And I don't think there's anything else to remove at the moment. Nope, not at the moment. All right. We now need to find a spanner. It's going to fit these nuts, and they're pretty large size, actually. Whoops, seven mil. 
don't even fit eight mil. They are pretty seriously big. I might have to use my shifting spanner on those, I think. Don't know if I've got anything big enough. No, it's only got a seven mil. All right. That's a bit of a shame. Would have been nice to have had a, an easy fix on that, but not so. Okay, shifting spanner it is. Loosen off the first one. And then run round and loosen them all initially before we start to remove them. Another one on the bottom. Spin it round. The top of the plates. We've now loosened all the nuts on the pillars. Right, I'll take the nuts off now, put them in a dish. It's a pretty, pretty wonky looking nut, that one. They certainly didn't drill that in the center. That's the third one. Now, the two up the other end. We'll get rid of those. Then we can remove the top plate. Right, we'll carefully start lifting the top plate up by pushing down on the pullers, and pulling the plate up, being prepared for there to be a little bit of tension remaining in the trains. Seems to be all right, that didn't, didn't seem to be too bad. Right, we'll lift the top part of the plate off now. And there we had some tension for sure. And carefully lift the plate off. There we go. Put that over there, and there's our movement. Hmm, that's rather intriguing. The piece that jumped out appears to have originally been the lift lever. Each one of those has been cut off. That would have had the, the count lever on it, and this one here would have had the warning wheel on it. Isn't that bizarre? Right, oh, that was a piece that jumped out. So who knows what bizarre things we're going to find in here also. Right, we'll start taking the strike train out first. Take the fly out. Here we go. Then the maintenance cam, if we can get that out. That's a bit. Oop, there we go, last little bit of tension. That's the maintenance cam. Now we can get the warning wheel out. Well, that the first wheel has come out. Now we've got the warning wheel with its pin and then the great wheel comes out that slips straight off it's a loop end mainspring that being the loop end put that over there in the box now take the levers out Oh, dear oh dear, that's been cut off, that's been cut off too. This is going to be an exciting experiment and the J-hook that was tied down. That looks like it may have been butchered, I'm not sure, but the other ones definitely have. 
Take that out. I can go there. Ah, all right. So the minute arbor comes out, which is that piece there. That wire there is bent. We may have to straighten that up, I think. But we'll try it with the configuration it's in at the moment first, just to see if it actually works or not. But that looks like a spring might have bent it round, I think. This is a motion works. This piece here, our wheel and the cannon pipe. Those over there. Now, third wheel on the time side. Second wheel on the time side. First wheel on the time side. And then the time side mainspring. All right, we'll clean and grease those later on. Let's have a look at the, the back plate. Looking to be oily. Mm. Yeah, serious amount of oil in there. All right, I'll get these ready to go into the ultrasonic cleaner. But before they go in, I'll remove some of this oil on here to give the cleaner a fair chance at cleaning the plate up and in there. Well, I'll have to get another piece of peg wood so I can peg that out and clean it before it goes into the cleaner. I have a new sharpened piece of peg wood that I'll put in through these bushes here, turn them round and remove excess oil that's in them fair amount there, give that a wipe and run around it again. Yep, that's looking clean up. Right, we'll get them ready to go in now. Okay, we'll start off by putting the, the plates into the ultrasonic cleaner basket. They stand up on the side like so, making sure that they will fit down deep enough into the solution so that they all get clean. I'll put the pillar nuts into this little tea strainer bag I've got there. And then I'll start cutting some wire to hold all these parts together so it'll be easier to see which train the parts have come from. We'll start off with the motion works in the centre. And pop that guy on with him there. Roll over, twist it. And into the basket it goes. Another piece of wire. A little bit longer. Bend him in half. We'll put the strike side, or what used to be the strike side, wheels on there. Warning wheel. And the fly. Tighten them up on the end to hold them together. And there we go. Into the basket. Another one. Piece of wire, bend it in the middle. First wheel from the time side. Second wheel. Third wheel. And the fourth wheel being the escape wheel. Twist them up. There we go. 
that out of the road. That's all our parts at the moment. I'll take the the great wheels off their springs so we can put them in. Wind them round and they'll drop out around that direction. A bit tight. I'll get our number five. My number five key. And wind it round till it clicks out. It is pretty tight. Yep, it has to go that way. That's the way it goes. See what we can see. I jump onto the the time side. This looking pretty oily in there. God, there's some oil in that. Gas, look at that. Run it round with our multi key. Doesn't want to come out either, actually. They are tight. If you find this video helpful, please leave a like and don't forget to subscribe. I'll have to push them out if they're going to be that hard to get on with. All right. They seem to be in pretty good nick, don't they? Nice and shiny now. Strike side. Yep, same for the time card, they look all right. Motion works. Goes on the minute arbor. The nuts that hold the plates together. And the plates themselves have come up rather nicely. Certainly made a difference taking the, the oil out of those big pivots. That's the front plate and that's the back plate. You'll remember we put a piece of wire on that to designate the, the strike side main wheel. So we'll put that over there with the strike side components and the wheels. These are the going side train wheels and the escape wheel. We'll put the nuts into a dish here so they're really accessible. Motion works we'll leave to later. Alright, so that's got those set up now. Move the wheels for the moment. We'll put the back plate on a stand. And then we can start aligning the wheels. Before we start checking the pivots and the bushes, we'll peg out the bushes and the holes and the plate to make sure they're clean. If they're dirty, you're going to get an improper reading when you're checking them out to see what needs rebushing. So we'll just run up the, the plate, check each one. Yep, they're pretty clean. There's no marks on the, the peg wood there. Now run over the front plate. Same thing again. Some bushed holes. Also some raw holes that were punched in in the factory. Some have been rebushed or bushed, and some haven't. Just to make sure that they're all clean before we start checking them. Yep, that looks pretty good. Okay, we'll start off with putting in the great wheel to get our orientation. Cause if you don't, it's quite easy to set all the wheels upside down and they all look like they're apparently correct until you try to work the movement. All right. First wheel in, put the top plate on, a 
lift them up carefully align the pivot into the bush which is there get the posts set up there's a slight bend in this in this top plate we we'll look at that in a moment that's a serious seriously deformed hole there that's not sliding in at all right I'll round that off in a second but in the meantime it's sufficient if I hold this tightly we can see what condition the pivots and bushes are in all right we're looking at that one there good heavens look at the wobble on that that's shocking and the back looking at that pivot there marginally not quite so bad as the front but the front the front plate is pretty horrible all right so it looks like we're going to have some bushing to do on this movement but I don't know that we're actually going to do it because I've spent more time looking at the movement and I can't see how the guy got the music box to work after rummaging in my spare parts box I eventually found a key that I could use to wind the music box spring up with. However, when I tried to wind the spring up, I found there was a match pushed into the winding slot. I tried to remove it with a fine pair of tweezers, but to no avail. So I was not able to get the spring wound up. This is just another weird mystery attached to this clock. It seems to have a pretty fair bow in that. Get a straight edge and check that out. Okay, top plate off. You can see how much that's out. That's out. Two mil. And we'll check this side here on the That side's all right. Check it on the top. Yeah, it's out. Down that end. Straight edge across here. Yup. That is certainly out of whack a bit see if that'll fit on without any wheels in it not only did he butcher numerous parts of the clock He's obviously butchered the plates too. He's bent the plates way out of alignment. The bottom two posts are in. You can see how much that is out of alignment. And the same there. I'll bend those two posts a tiny little bit. Not very much, tiny little bit, and see if it'll fit in better. If not, I'll get my parallel jaw pliers and get into it again. Now, That, that looks better. Yeah, all right. 
You can see all the posts are fitting in now, including that guy there. All right, problem solved. Now, back to checking the rest of the wheels. So, first wheel goes there. Second wheel will go there. That's its orientation. The teeth on that wheel will drive the trundles on that lantern pinion. All right, second wheel, let's check it out. Top plate on again. Align our posts. All right. Takes a little bit of getting it sorted, but we'll hold the bottom. Now, Line that pivot, you can click in, spins very freely, but so it should. Hold it there, that'll give us a... Alright, now we're looking at that pivot there. Horrible. That pivot there. It's one of the mashed ones that he's, he's hit with a hollow punch and still crap. After he's done that much damage to it, it's still rubbish, couldn't work. So, plenty of talent there by the sound of it. The last guy that played around with this. All right, third wheel. That's its orientation. Goes there. To play it on. Line the posts. And it's got them. Hold the plates together. That pivot has missed entirely. So we'll have to have to do it again, obviously. It just fell out. Top plate on again. Align the pillars. And then I went. And get our pivot into the bush. It's a bit. There we go. Try that. and then move it up a tiny little bit. There we go, that's got him. Done. Right, let's check the pivots. Go in there. Yeah, pretty shonky. That one there. If you find this video helpful, please leave a like and don't forget to subscribe. Right, that's three out of three so far. Now the escape wheel looks as though, there we go. Lift the escape wheel up. Line it with its pivot down there. Close. And then put the the posts into the plate and turn it over, see what we got. Yep, he's in there. Okay. Line the post, put them into the plate. You can see how smoothly that runs. Looking at that pivot there at the moment. Not too bad, but it needs redoing. And that's one of the butchered ones. All 
All right, well, every one of those butchings needs to be replaced. I'll put them aside and we'll check the ones on the other side. But as I said, I don't think we'll end up doing any bushing on this because the plate is in such a mess. And the music box obviously didn't work. All right, great wheel in to get our orientation. That's where it goes. Now, first wheel on the strike side. Top plate on. Align the posts. And that and then in there. Right, turn it over. Now, pivot into that bushing in there. We can get it and lift it up and pull it over a tiny little bit. Down. Just about, a tiny bit more, another mil. Whoop, that was obviously two mil. There we go. Whoop, is in place. So, looking at this pivot here. No, shocking. That pivot there, not quite as bad, but it would have to be redone for sure. Top plate off. Now, maintenance cam, orientation. Goes there. Top plate again. Line the posts and that one's way outside, so we'll lift that plate up a tiny bit. There we go, straight in. Excellent. Spinning very freely, so it should. The horrible looking bushings I've got in it. Look at that one there. Not quite as bad as the others, but bad enough to be redone. And that one there. Yep, yeah, rubbish. Not good. Now, warning wheel. It's its orientation there. Top plate on. No way. And see what we got up here in the way of Where's our pivot? There it is. Down a little bit and across. Got him. There we go. Posts into the plate. Spinning nice and freely. Looking at that pivot there. Yeah, not too bad, but it needs to be done. 
and that one there is one of the butchered ones. No, oh, no, it's not. That's a shot. Right, we'll check that. There, the butchered ones there. That one's not too bad. Actually, the yeah, it's a little bit. It's marginal. You'd do it because you were doing the other side on the front plate. Now we'll check the last one. Which is the fly, which goes there. Line the posts. And align the pivot of the fly. Push him over a little bit and down. Got him. Come out here. Post have moved. All right. I'll realign the bottom pivot. Over a tiny bit. I'm going to keep yeah. dropping out of the plate. All right. That pivot there. Yep, terrible. This one here that's just a hole in the, in the plate. Look at that moving. Wow, all right. Well, what we've discovered there is every bushing in the clock has to be replaced and the holes there's half a dozen of them there on the two plates that haven't got bushes in them are worn anyway so they need to have a bushing in them so that's a complete set of bushes one two three four six seven eight nine ten ten wheels there so 20 bushings would have to be done on that clock, assuming it was in working order or pretty close and we could get it up and running again, that'd be okay. But because this is so mangled, I'm not going to go any further with that. And most of the path will end up being thrown out. For some reason, he didn't butcher the J-hook he just tied it down so it couldn't work. That's the lift lever, or what purports to be a lift lever. Look at the mess of that. He's cut the three levers off it. And this one here has had two levers cut off it. All right, well, that's the end of that clock. What a horrible, horrible mess. So unfortunately, I'm sorry, you don't get to hear the music box working because it didn't work, never did and was never going to.